Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to colorize a black and white photo using GIMP. I'll be using all built-in tools so there's going to be no third-party plugins required for this tutorial and I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.20 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. But of course, before I get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of video tutorials on here, as well as my GIMP book of layers and free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. And you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is the black and white photo we'll be using for today's tutorial. This is from Pexels and you can download this using the free download button. I believe I went with the original size, if not the medium size. We're going to figure that out in a second. Second. And then I use this photo here, another free photo, as the reference photo. It doesn't really matter which photo size you download, but I do believe I went with the 1920 by 1280 version for this. So here is the final colorized photo. So if I shift click, there's a before, shift click, there is the final result. And if I come over here to a second composition I did, this is another result I produced using the techniques I'm about to show you. There is a ton of flexibility with this method so that you can basically choose whatever colors you want while you're colorizing this photo. So let's dive in by opening up the photo I wanna use. So I'll go to File, Open Recent in my case, and here is that black and white photo I wanna use. It's gonna ask me if I wanna convert this to GIMP's native sRGB color space. I do, so I'll hit Convert. One thing I'll note for some of you working on black and white photos, you may have to manually go to Image, mode and change this from grayscale to RGB before you start anything. Otherwise, when you're trying to paint on here, it's not going to paint colors. It's only going to paint black, white, or grayscale. And then as I mentioned, I also have this photo opened up here for reference. So we're going to be using this photo to take colors and use those colors over here inside of this photo. I do recommend having a reference photo, although you can also use a palette if you'd like. For starters, I like to go with the skin color because that's obviously the main thing that we're gonna be looking at here. That's the main thing that makes this look more realistic. So what I'll need to do is come over here to our reference photo and I need to start pulling colors from the photo. So I'll hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. What I'll do is come over here and grab my eyedropper tool and you'll see my eyedropper tool has a square around it. That's because I have the sample average checked under the tool options for the color picker. So sample average is going to give us an average of the pixels inside of this area, as opposed to just giving us a single color with this tool. And this is what we want because we don't want the exact same colors as the person in this photo. And we don't want to grab just a single pixel color, which could be any color really. So I can use the left or right brackets on my keyboard the same way I can resize a brush. And that's going to resize this radius. We can also use the mouse wheel here. And I'm just going to click and grab a range of color averages here. So for starters, I'm clicking on a nice bright spot on her skin. So here you can see that color we selected. I'm just going to click this arrow to add it right here and click OK. So that's the highlight. Now I'm going to grab a darker color. So let's go with this color right here under the chin. So there's a nice dark color. I'll come over here once again, click to add that into my swatches. And now I'm going to start to grab some in-between colors from her skin tone. So I really just want like six or seven colors here. And I want them to be a variety of colors from the skin because skin tone does have various color shades. So there we have five. I'm just going to grab one more color here, probably that color right there. And now we have six, I'll click OK. So what I'll do with these colors is add them to their own palette, which is going to represent the skin tones I want to use. And I'm going to do this for the other elements of the model here as well. So that includes the hair, the eyes, the lips, etc. So I'll go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and I'll come over here to Palettes. Here I can create a custom palette, so I'll come over here and click this Create a New Palette icon. I'm going to name this one Skin Tones 2 because I already did this earlier. And now what I'll do is come over here and click to create a new entry. So this is going to create a new swatch. 
and the swatch is going to be based on what my foreground color is. If you want to use your background color, just control click on this icon instead. But I'll come over here and change my foreground color to the next color. We're just going to go down the line here and I'll click OK, click to create a new color. All right, so now I have six colors here for these skin tones and it's a pretty good range of colors, so I think that's gonna work for that. Next, let's do the same for the hair. So we're gonna come over here and start grabbing various shades of this brown color from her hair. So I'll click to add this as a swatch here and I'm just going to grab various shades of this color. And if you want, you can decrease the size so that you get an average using less colors and you can just also click around here on your image until you get a color you like. So in this case, I'm just gonna go with these four colors for now. I actually don't recommend overdoing it with the number of colors you wanna use because then it can start to make the final colorized photo look fake. That's not what we wanna do. So let's come back over here to our palettes. We're going to click to create a new palette and we're gonna name this one Hair Color 2 because once again, I did already do this earlier. But I'll click to create a new palette from our foreground color and we'll do that for the other three colors here as well. All right, so there are our four colors. Let's do the same for the lips and then finally we'll do the eyes as well. All right, so there we have four colors for the lips. I'll click OK. Let's add a new palette. So come over here to the Palettes tab. We're going to click to create a new palette. I'll name this Lips 2. And we'll click to create a new swatch from our foreground color. And there we have our Lips palette. You can add more colors if you want. Once again, I don't recommend going above six or seven colors. Finally, let's go to the eyes. So I'll hold control, zoom in, and I'll decrease the size of this little sample average area. And just grab a variety of shades here. And come over here back to our palettes, create a new palette. We'll name this one Eye Colors 2 and click to create new swatches from our foreground color. All right, I'll hold control, zoom out, and I'm just gonna close out the palette editor here, so I'll click close tab using this little triangle menu, and I've already got some custom palettes that I've made here, so we will go through and use the correct ones for this tutorial, but I'll come over here to my black and white image, so here's the image we wanna work on. I'll start by duplicating the original. So let's double click on this, rename this original, hit the enter key and come over here and click the duplicate icon. So now we have a nice copy here. You should still have your palettes tab opened up here. So what you'll need to do first is choose an area you want to color. So in this case, I wanna go with my skin tones cause I wanna work on the skin. So I'm gonna click on this to make it active and now what it'll do is go to Colors, Map, Palette Map. And this looks messed up right now. I'll hit Control Z because I have to come over here and rearrange the palettes from darkest to brightest. So what I'll do is just click and drag this palette to the left and let's just click on that palette and delete that entry since now it's over here. So every time I click and drag this over, it will create a duplicate. So I just need to delete the original. So you do want this relatively in order from darkest to lightest. And once you have that order set, now make sure you're on that copy layer and once again go to Colors, Map, Palette Map. And that should create a nicer palette map there. Once the palette map is in place, next we'll come over here to the original copy layer and we'll change the layer mode. So I'll click on the layer mode drop down and you wanna change this to one of the color modes near the bottom here. So you have HSL color or LCH color are two good examples here. 
So here you see the skin tones have been added to the copy layer and we don't really want all the skin tones here being throughout the entire image. It just makes the image look sepia tone. So we're gonna come over to the copy layer, right click, go to add layer mask, and I'm gonna go with black full transparency and click add. That will hide everything. Now I'll come over and grab my paintbrush tool. So it's gonna be grouped here. Usually you guys will probably see the paintbrush tool first, but you can hit the P key to access that. I'm gonna make sure my opacity is set to 100. And right now I do have a pretty soft brush here. You can go with something around 50. I'll hold control, zoom in. I'm going to reset my foreground and background colors to black and white and swap this over to white. And now I'm gonna paint white on the layer mask on the areas where I want the skin tone color to come through. It doesn't matter if this is perfect right now and you can adjust the size of your brush using the left or right brackets on your keyboard. We will go back here and uh, fix some of this, clean some of this up. And I'll hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. That helps me get a bit more precise. I'm going to avoid areas like the eyes, and I'm gonna to try to avoid the eyebrows, but that's okay, we can always go back and fix it. All right, so once I have all of the skin color painted in here, I'm going to hit the X key on my keyboard to switch to black, and I'm going to paint black on the layer mask where I don't want this skin color showing where I may have painted it. So for example, I do want to paint this necklace out. And I can hit the X key again and paint anything back in that I need to. But we can clean this up later. That's gonna be a good start for now. I do need to make sure I get this area right here. Hold control and zoom out, and there we go. So obviously, we're gonna have to tweak the actual color of the skin, and it'll look less weird once we bring in the other colors from the photo. So now let's work on some of the other elements of the photo, starting with the hair. So I'll come over here to the original layer, and I'm going to duplicate this once again. And actually, let me change the name of the original copy layer. Let's go with skin tones and hit the Enter key. And then for this one, I'll double click, and we'll go with hair hit the enter key. So we'll do the same thing here as we did with these skin tones. We'll come over to the palettes dialog and we're gonna try to find that hair color we created earlier in the tutorial, so there it is. So I can double click on this and let's just rearrange this. There we go. So we're gonna click and drag that to the very far left. We'll delete that and we'll take this lighter palette, move it to the right and we'll delete the duplicate there, and then this one looks like it's a little lighter, so we'll move it over here, and we'll delete that one. So now we have this going from left to right, darkest to lightest, and I'll go to Colors, Map, Palette Map, and that will map our colors down here on this copy layer, the hair layer, to our image. So next what we'll do is we'll come over here and change the layer mode once again to LCH Color, and now I'll right click, go to add layer mask. And once again, we'll go with black full transparency and click add. So that will hide everything temporarily. Let's come over here, reset the colors to black and white, flip this to white. And we still have our paintbrush tool. So I'll hold control and zoom in, increase the size of my brush a bit. I can always use the slider. And I'm just going to paint in the hair color and we will tweak this color as well. We're gonna tweak all the colors at the very end to bring this all together. And a hold control zoom in. So I'm gonna paint on the eyebrows here. And let's move over here, paint on these eyebrows. And now I'll hit the X key to switch over to black and just paint all the excess here. So any obvious areas that I accidentally painted. Same with over here, and there is the hair. 
All right, so let's work on the lips next. So we'll come over, duplicate this, rename the duplicate layer to lips, hit the enter key, come over to the palettes, and we'll find the lips palette, and we'll rearrange these. Of course, it'll save you some time if you choose the colors in order from darkest to lightest from the beginning. But once we have those in order, I'll go to colors, map, palette map. So that's gonna map everything to pink. If I shift click on this lips layer, you could see what this looks like. So hold control, we're only interested in this part of the photo here. And just so you know, the palette map is trying to match up the luminosity of the colors in the original photo to the luminosity of the colors in your palette. So let's shift click on this again, and we only need the lips portion. So what I'll do is right click, add layer mask, black full transparency, click add, and we're gonna switch our colors to black and white and flip this so that white is our foreground. Hold control and zoom in and just paint white on the lips here. And I'm also going to come over, change the mode to LCH color. And we have some of the skin tones spilling over a bit too much, so we'll come back to the skin tones and hit the X key to make sure we have black as our foreground and just paint some of that out and we will adjust the color of the lips. I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but just wanna make sure you guys don't forget. Finally, let's do the eyes. So we'll come over, duplicate this, come over to the palettes, double click on the eyes colors, rearrange those colors inside of the palette and we'll come over, go to colors, map, palette map, and right click, add layer mask, black full transparency, hold control, zoom in. I'm going to reset my foreground and background color. We'll swap that to white. And I'm just going to paint the iris. And this doesn't look great right now. We're gonna fix it. So I'll come over here to the actual layer, change this to LCH color, hold control and zoom out. Let's come back to the skin tones and we're just going to fix some of these gray spots here and also make sure we get right under the eye. It doesn't matter if we paint the actual eyelashes. And I'll hit the X key to switch to black. I wanna paint the eyebrows because I want these to be the hair color and not the skin tone color. And we can always decrease the hardness and increase the brush so that it fades out a little better. Just use the slider here. And we'll do the same on this side. Switch back to white and paint these gray areas that we see. And finally, the last thing I wanna do is come back to the lips layer. I'm gonna paint a little bit of pink right here in the center of the eye. So I'm going to actually decrease the opacity and then just paint some of that pink color right there, as well as right here, so that's just for the tear duct. And let's come back to the hair, so we're just cleaning this up right now. And we're gonna swap between the various layer masks just to make sure that we're getting the right colors in here. All right, so we pretty much have the main elements done of the photo. Now let's get into the dress color as well as the backdrop color. So for this, we're gonna use a slightly different technique. I'll come over to the original, duplicate this, and let's go with the dress color first. So I'm gonna to go to colors, colorize, and I'll hold control, zoom out with my mouse wheel. So I'm keeping an eye on the dress color here. And what I'm gonna do is click on the color and you can move this around to wherever you want. Again, keeping an eye on the actual dress and move this up or down. I liked a green color dress for this particular photo here. I suppose because her hair is a bit on the dark side, but you can try out any color you want. So I'll go with that for now. And then you can adjust the actual green color here. So we can start with the lightness slider. We can also work on the saturation slider. And you can also tweak the hue a bit. So we can shift the green color to a slightly different green or a totally different color altogether. 
But I like that color right there, so I'll click OK. Now I'll right click, add layer mask, and go with black, full transparency. Grab the paint tool, make sure I have white as my color, and I'll increase the size of my brush. And now I'm just gonna paint on the layer mask where I want the dress to be green. And I'll hit the X key, you can always come over here and paint in any areas that you didn't wanna have that green. And then let's come back to the skin tones. I just wanna fix this part right here, right along the border. Just want there to be a bit more skin tone there. All right, so the dress is green. And by the way, I did realize at the end of that I didn't have my opacity turned all the way up on my brush. So I just went over everything on my layer mask again with the 100% opaque brush. So that painted white on those areas. But next we're gonna use that same technique on the backdrop. So first let's come over and we're just going to duplicate this. And I'll double click and rename this backdrop. And I did update the names of these layers to dress and eyes as well. But now we're gonna to go to colors, colorize. And here I went with a nice blue color. You guys can go with whatever color you want. So I like that blue right there. I'll click okay. So make sure that you click okay again a second time. You can always adjust the colors here a bit more, but I'll just click okay. So now we have our blue backdrop layer. I'll right click go to add layer mask and go to black full transparency and click add. So making sure my foreground color is still white and selecting my paintbrush tool, I'll increase the size of my paintbrush. And now I'm going to paint white on that layer mask. And I'm only gonna paint on the backdrop areas All right, so there's our blue backdrop. I'm gonna hold control and zoom in a bit and decrease the opacity once again. I'm just going to paint on this transparent jewelry here. That's just going to give it some of that blue shine. I'll hit control Z. I'm actually going to decrease the opacity a bit more, but that way it looks a bit more realistic like it's reflecting the color of the lights. And I'm also gonna switch over to the skin tones again while I'm still on my white and I'm just going to make sure I paint this color in, and let's turn the opacity up to 100. There we go. Everything has been colorized in our photo. Now it's time to just tweak everything so that it all looks that much more realistic. So let's start with the skin tones. I'll click on the actual layer. We'll go to colors, levels, and now I can just tweak the levels of the skin tones. And I'll come over here and change some of the colors so we can adjust how much red is in here. Now let's go over to green. So anytime I remove green, it's going to add magenta. And finally, I'll go over here to blue. So here's a before, here is an after. I'll click OK. Let's do the same for the hair. So I'll go to Colors, Levels, and I'm not going to color correct the hair. I'll just do the levels on this. And I'll come over and click OK. We can also go to Colors, Curves, and adjust the curves on the hair. This will help add a bit of contrast and also just balance out some of the tones. Click OK. Just clean this up a bit. The last thing I'll do before adding the finishing touches is I'm just going to adjust the color of the eyes. So I'll come over here to the eyes. We'll go to colors, hue saturation, and you can do this with any of the layers. You can change the colors. So in this case right now, there's not much that it looks like is being adjusted but if we increase the lightness and the saturation, and for example, if we bring this all the way down, now she's got more hazel eyes. You can see here they're more green. 
And if we go more to the right, they're more of a bluish color. So we can bring them out a bit with the lightness. Saturation as well. So that just makes them a bit more blue. So finally, I'm just gonna add a bit of red to her cheeks so that it looks like some realistic makeup and skin coloring. And then I'm gonna show you one last trick just to try to get the skin color to look a bit more realistic. So let's come back to the top here and click to create a new layer. I'm gonna name this Rouge and fill it with transparency, click OK. So we'll come over here and grab the airbrush tool. And then I'm gonna click on my foreground color and go with a nice bright pinkish, maybe reddish color. Maybe about right there and I'll click OK. And I'm going to increase the size of my brush, not too big, make it nice and soft. And then I'm just going to paint this color and come over here to the mode and change this to something like overlay or maybe soft light. I think soft light looks a bit better. I'm gonna decrease the opacity slightly and we can always add a bit more if we want to. Decrease the opacity a bit more. And finally, the last little tip here is to go over to the skin tones layer, go to colors, color to alpha. And what this will do is it'll make some of the skin colors transparent. So I'll come up here. This is the same as blend if in Photoshop for those of you familiar with Photoshop. And what you can do is just drag your mouse around here and see if this is going to make your skin tones look more realistic by making certain colors on the skin tone layer transparent. So maybe about right there, I'll click OK. So there's a before, you can see there's some artificial colors in here I don't really like. Here's an after, this does a good job of getting rid of those, it's very subtle, but I'll click OK. Control Shift J, that's gonna center our image up and there's our colorized black and white photo. So shift click, there's a before, shift click, there's an after. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.